Thank you. How's it going, guys? Hey, man. How are you? Good. How I'm are good. You? I'm good. What's going on, guys? How's it going? Good. How are you? All right. I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain. I'm healthy. That's the most important part. What's going on, fellas? How's it going? What's good, up, man. man. How's yourself? I'm great. I'm great. So, hey, guys. How's it going today, though? How's it going? Great. Oh, good, great, good. Great. Got tons of questions. So let's jump into it. Uh, this show is special because each character has its own, you know, own flavor, their own unique life experiences. I just wanted to know exactly which shenanigans that happens in this in these episodes that actually happen in your real lives. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah. That's uh, a good question. I mean, I never I wish I had a beautiful therapist to talk to, <laughs> but I do fully believe they would not get the full scope of my weirdness and the shit going on in my head. That's definitely for sure. Um, but I, I will say that the the one like comparison I do have with my character, I'm trying to still think of the shenanigans, is that I, I am a person who like is very much into like romantic things and like loves loves and you know. Uh, but I like to say I'm romantic, hopeful, as opposed to a, a romantic, hopelessly romantic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely connect with Noah in the aspect that, like, you know, I like relationships and, you know, all that jazz. Uh, let's see. Shenanigans for me. Um, I have dated somebody who uh, leans a little uh, conservative. Uh, and yes, there was only one date. There was not a second um so yeah that definitely is like from my life uh i don't even know if i told phil that story but it's just so funny that it like was put in the episode um, you pole dance too like your characters oh yeah yeah i pole dance like uh like i spin around the pole and land in a split that is not a stunt double that is a girl. <laughs> okay <laughs> it, it is not easy i, I was like trying to and it was, that stuff's hard that's yeah i taught really him a hard. couple moves and uh yeah, it's 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 a tough thing to to learn and do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I applaud poll experts, man. They're they're amazing, man. They they don't get enough credit sometimes, you they know. They don't. They, they don't. They don't I get enough credit. Anybody who goes to a strip club and done tip at least two dollars per dance, you don't understand how hard that. <laughs> they, they are the doctors of the entertainment industry, in my opinion. <clears throat> Absolutely, and, and therapists too, in some sense. Yeah. You know? facts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of uh, emotional health and wealth going on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what shenanigans in this show did actually happen in your life? I'm curious. I want to know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, personally, I am a recently divorcee, or or in the process <laughs> of divorcing. Um, and you know, we haven't really dived into the divorce of Faye, except for just mentioning it. But I yeah. believe that Faye had an amicable divorce and is still friends with her ex-husband. And maybe he'll come into the show if we get a second season, who knows? Um, and in real life, that is the same for me. Me and my ex-husband are actually very good friends. Um, as far as anything else, I'm trying to think of any shenanigans. I mean, the shenanigans Faye gets up to this season are pretty extreme. So none of those have really <laughs> happened to me in real life. Um, but I will say I definitely have like a crew in real life that is very similar to that of the show. Mm -hmm. And we do go to a local wine bar on the east side of LA. So there was a lot of things that when I read the script, I was like, wow, this is me. <laughs> I was like, this is <laughs> what I do, where I hang out, where I live. Um, I'm from New York. So yeah, a lot of a lot of face characteristics I can definitely uh, relate to. Awesome, awesome. Yes to uh, mm -hmm. you and your ex-husband getting along very well. I like to hear that. Thank you. How about, how about yourself, Justin? Uh, I I think that um, yeah, there's not really anything that's that's in the show that's happened to me in real life. But I I will say that you know Wyatt is extremely competitive, not only with his wife but with his friends as well. And I am extremely competitive in real life. I'm I'm very competitive in almost everything. Um, yeah. So so that's that's very that's very real for me. So. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't even know how really to, to describe or how far I should go into that, but yeah, I'm competitive. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say the competitive the pet competitiveness rubs off you when you say you go to the gym? I see you work out a lot. So that's where it rubs oh, off yeah. you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at, <laughs> I, I just recently, because like I've been putting on a little bit more mass. I don't know if you can, you can see that, but I, I, started, good, I started because, because one, I've been sweating so much and like, I've been sweating all over the equipment. So I had to roll up my sleeves. And so uh, like, I was like actually seeing like my progress and I was like looking around, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. 
That's right. <laughs> I'm doing 100 set reps. What? What? Okay. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, got I'm really competitive. <laughs> got it, got it. Which of the shenanigans that go on the show is actually based on your life? Like, what, what, what of those shenanigans happened for you? Wow. Go ahead, Carl. Um, I've definitely broke somebody's bed before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. She had one of them little Ikea beds. I cracked through that thing. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I did pay for it, so I did. No, you didn't fix it yourself. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't fix myself. It was one of my kids. You, dr- you drill something through that particle board, that mess is turned into dust. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Phil knew this when he wrote it, but, you know, I was just telling Carl the other day, like, I had a friend hit me up in my DMs, like, like, you know, man, you slap bots and that, you know what I mean? Like, so, so the slap bots and me and my boys used to do a lot of, uh, and then also like the stuff in the first episode with the coaster, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a little anal when it comes to that little OCD, you come to my house, you, de- you better use that, that coaster <laughs> that you see sitting on the coffee table, you know what I mean? So there's a little bit of, of all those things. I would say that like, you know, I don't know that it's really drawn from like my actual experience, me personally, Carl mm-hmm. was already a part of that friend group before. So Phil may be privy to things that I don't know about uh, <laughs> Carl's past, uh, but there are so many things that have, that have come up in this show and that will later come up in, in, in later episodes that I'll, I'll like turn to Phil and be like, yo, man, like, did you, you been in my journal? Like, what, like, who, who did you talk to? Like, you, work, you work for the fans, you know what I'm saying? I, I, how did you get this storyline, you know? But I think it's just, he, he's so diligent at what he does. So, uh, yeah, it's a testament to that. One, now, Justin, one episode uh, focuses on men crying. Why do you think mm-hmm. it is so taboo among Black men to cry in front of each other? Uh, because historically we we haven't been allowed to be vulnerable we've always had to be um tough i mean i come from i'm from arkansas and so i come from you know farm farm country where where we didn't cry Uh, i mean we had to if you can hear my my accents coming out a little bit but um but we had to you know on the weekends we, we we had to catch cows and take them to the sale and so you get into the Actually, I was just, I was in Arkansas, uh, the end of December, I was helping my dad, I had to go catch some cows. As soon as I got there, we had to go to work. And you can't, you can't uh, show fear. You can't, uh, if you get into the pen to catch some cows, or if you have a bull staring at you, you can't show fear, you got to be tough. And you can't, even if you get hit or knocked through a fence, you got to get up, and you got to, you got to push forward. So historically, I think that's, that's a weird analogy and scenario. But uh, <laughs> I think historically, um, just growing up, you know, we, we haven't had that that opportunity or that or that space to uh, to go into our feelings and and to express it. And and so for for a lot of uh, men of color, it's it may seem like it's something that's foreign, but we just express uh, those types of feelings in different ways. And it's important that the show shows uh, what it what it can be, what it's what it can be allowed to be, what, what it can be acceptable for male, black male vulnerability. And I think uh, it's it's a blessing to, to get to explore that in, in whatever scenario, whatever kind of goofy way we get to explore. It. But uh, yeah, yeah, historically we're not we're not allowed to. You guys definitely explored it in a goofy way. I gotta admit <laughs> to that. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. uh, why do you think shows such as Grand Grand Crew are far and few between? You could both answer that question. Well, I mean. I'm also a writer and I like to, I'm developing some stuff and, you know, to sell anything is hard in this town Um, and to sell something and actually get it on television is nearly impossible to sell something, getting on television and it have an all black cast is one in a million. So I think like there's many levels to it. I mean, I think we're still, Hollywood has come a long way, but I think we still have a long way to go where, you know, people will look at a cast of all black people and say oh that's a black show but you don't look at a cast of all white people and say that's a white show that's just a show and so why is that and so i think why grand crew is so important is because you know yes we are all black people but also these topics and and these um the things the subject matter that we cover is universal and human and we all have feelings we all fall in love we all have friendships so we can all relate to it on, on some level but also Yes, it's for black people too, of course. And it's like, that's okay too. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's super important that the show is out there. And I hope 
people of all colors will support it and watch it and give it a chance. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard. Hollywood's hard. And it's like, you know, if we get a second season, that's even, you know, a, a whole nother le- level of hardness. So hopefully we get it. But um, yeah, I, I think it's important, but we still have a long way to go. Awesome. I think, I think, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, oh, no. I was, I was saying like, yeah, I, I feel like for me, I'm just going to speak from a play, my place of truth or whatever I feel is my truth. Um, but yeah, like it's almost like a level of a little bit of, of frustration, you know, when you, when you do a show like this that has an all black cast, it feels like sometimes, you know, people put it, put a, put a, um, a label on it uh saying like oh this is this is uh this is a black show in this this way and, and it kind of it doesn't exclude people but it just puts a label and then people read labels and um i think this show uh yes it is an all-black cast but it is a cast of people and i think the show uh gets to explore that uh just being people who happen to be of color and I think that's that's important for people to to recognize inside this show, and that it's not just you know the uh, a black show with you know a black agenda because that's 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 the thing that people inherently will, will sort of feel when they see an all black cast that it's it is coming from a, from a black perspective, but it's also a human perspective, which is also something that I was drawn to when I first read the script was that I felt human reading it, and I didn't feel like my color of the color of my skin was leading to my choices. Uh, and I think that's 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 no that's a, a tip to, of the hat to uh, to Phil uh, the writer Phil, Phil Phil Jackson the writer. So, um, but yeah, I I feel like um, uh, yeah we we yeah the show may get labeled in in a certain sense of being a black show or having an all black cast. And that's what the draw is. But I think it's a, what the draw could be is is this is a very talented group of individuals coming together to do a comedy, and it's really really funny, and people get to play be fun and be goofy and they happen to be black and they they explore the blackness as well but it's it's a it's a it's a show that has that explores many different colors and many different levels and it's a diversity in our characters and the type of characters we play and the type of characters we get to play that you don't often see being portrayed by people of color now uh why do you think shows like grand crew are so far and few between i mean we could talk about the systemic issues that we we deal with uh, living in a white patriarchal world. Uh, But the the thing that I like to lean into, I think is the perspective that change can happen and that hopefully we're continually moving in a place where it's less of an anomaly to have a show like this on the air and that, you know, shows like these get a chance to breathe and find audiences. And, you know, it's just so cool to see all the shows like like just Tuesday nights, like so stack, you know, with us and everything else that's like airing right now. And it's really cool to just see so many black faces because that's just mm-hmm. something I didn't really get to see growing up outside of a few shows or unless you're really kicking on Fox, you know, what I'm saying the early. <laughs> like that. Um, so it's definitely like it's definitely, you know, there's so much work to do and, you know, there's a long way to go, but I feel good about the trajectory that we're heading in that hopefully these things won't, won't be the rarity, but more of the commonality of just exploring different people's stories. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to echo, echo, uh, (laughs) I feel like there was a lot of black shows in the nineties that did really well, but they were allowed time to grow now we live in a world where we have streaming we have network we have you know just so many different places that you can see things that people aren't letting things grow they're like oh we didn't get the numbers it's like well you didn't put it on hulu or you didn't put it on netflix or whatever so then things get canceled and then they're just like oh well that black show didn't work x y and z well let's and it's like well you didn't let it have time Mm, and then it's like well some white shows work and some white shows do not work are you gonna stop making white shows I don't think so. So maybe it's like we think in terms of shows or shows, some work, some don't. Also, people at the top need to be, you know, trans, people of color, uh, differently abled people or disabled people. I can't remember what I'm supposed to say. Uh, But it it needs to be diverse and inclusive if you want to affect change, because people tend to like what they know. And if you just a bunch of white people, eight white people making choices, of course, you're going to be like, well, I like these white people. They're nice. They remind me of me. (laughs) <laughs> you know, so it's like a change up top can change 
that kind of trickle down economics works. That works. Oh, Reagan. Oh, Reagan. Hello, that- Reagan. <laughs> that works, Reagan. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Echo really hates Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, why do you believe shows such as Grand Crew are so far and few between? Uh, for me, I, I think it's because people people judge a book by its cover. They look at it and they go, oh, I can't relate to that. And mm. so you got those same people get jobs that pick, you know, shows like that. And they get scared that, oh, if somebody sees this, they're not going to relate to it. But they got to, you know, as a comedian, I'm taught to play to the height of the audience's intelligence. So, mm. like, play to the top of their intelligence. They they can identify with stuff that they didn't think that they would like. And, like, you know, I've definitely, you know, seen commercials pop up during the football game. And I'll go on Twitter and see something. And people are like, I actually watched that show. It's actually pretty good. And it's like people that you would never think. When you read the rest of their tweets, you'd be like, oh, damn. But uh, <laughs> you, like, but they like that show, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, you just got to play to the top of people's intelligence, and I think that that gets lost in in the show making process at times. And that's no disrespect to anybody. I just because uh, I need my job, but I uh, <laughs> uh, I but I I definitely think you know I I wish there could be more, but like I'm just happy to have this one now, and hopefully that this you know helps change the trend. We've been seeing it over the years. Hopefully, you know, we're getting back in. There's some good shows on right now that are black driven specifically and minority driven specifically. Um, and I think hopefully that tide is changing, like as the as the world changes. Yeah, and I, I think like, you know, sort of the, the powers that be see these as black stories as opposed to just human stories, right? We're, we're fixated on on race as opposed to just the humanity. Um, and, and if it's a human story, then anyone can connect to it, you know, which I think Grand Crew does a really great job of, right? We infuse a lot of humor in the humanity as well as just like heart, you know? Um, and so there's a little bit of something for everybody. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that would be my answer to that one. Can you both tell me why do you believe that, you know, shows such as Grand Crew are so far and few between? Why do you believe that? Um... I think, you know, the the simple answer is that there's not a a, a ton of black showrunners. <laughs> I think that's that's what it is. I I I I think that's why they're few and far in between. I think um I think uh that they're hopefully uh, they're yeah. I, I I as a as a producer would love to <laughs> elevate more black voices and more voices of color. Um but I think that's the that's the that's the simple explanation. There, you know, um, I'm I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity, and I'm super thankful um, that I got to kind of put my vision and my voice out there. And my hope is that um, this unlocks a little bit more potential for more people that look like me to to be in charge and to kind of get their vision across as well. But that's the simple answer, I think, to me. And I think it's like, hopefully, it's more and more that there'll be shows like this and you know this this show has an unbelievable writing staff and like i think the dream is that every every person on that writing sh- staff goes off and makes their As own show mm-hmm. so, you know and that, that, that that's how I, hopefully that's how it works and finally can you both tell me what are you most proud of when it comes to this show um I'm proud of the fact that that we're uh representing black people across the spectrum you know um as well as just people um, and in this existence, I think that's very important. And then that we, for a half hour, you can sit down and, and, and laugh and smile. And, and you know, um, I think that's very important and very needed right now, given the pandemic that we're, that we're all still experiencing and going through, you know, and, and so- yeah, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, so yeah, that's what I'm most proud of for sure. I agree with that. I second that, True. I, I think it's also fun. I think people are finally catching on, like as the episodes go on every week that we live in such a hot take culture <laughs> that it's like this show is not does not lend for that many hot takes. It's just yeah. just sit down and enjoy it and watch it, and it's and it's there. Like you can go back to hot taking after that. You know, hot take, <laughs> hot take this is us. Uh, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we own it. We just chilling. Now, when it comes to the show, what are you two most proud of when it comes to this show? Uh, I'm most proud that the show got made. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, um, and, and I'm proud of, um, I'm proud of the ensemble that we have. I'm proud of the, I'm proud of the actors that we put together. Uh, I'm proud of the writer's room. 
that we put together. Sorry, this is more than one thing. You asked for the no, 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 one no it's thing. good. I'm You're taking everything of, that I was going to say. Yeah, I'm proud of the otherwise. I'm proud of the writers room we put together, and you know, it's been a long time since we've had an all black cast on 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 network TV um, and on NBC specifically. So I'm I'm proud of that too, as as somebody who grew up you know, in the nineties watching like mm-hmm. different world living singles, you know, Martin shows like that. I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I, I'm proud of that as well too, just to be in the mix. Awesome. Well, you took everything I was going to say, which is I'm proud of, of, <laughs> of, of, of the show, both in front of and behind the camera. Um, but I would also say, I'm really proud that uh, Phil had a, a, a singular vision and that we were able to, to make that vision come to life. And I feel like we really didn't have to compromise a lot in order in order to 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 put this show on and 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 i'm really proud of that i'm really proud of of the show of the finished product you know awesome awesome now i have a question um in the pilot garrett morris opened up with a really great monologue for the show i was wondering like i noticed i didn't see him in the other episodes is that on purpose or is it just some sort of reasoning behind all that yeah so you know um with the, with that opening, um, I think we were so excited to get Garrett. He is such a legend, um, yeah. and 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 honestly, just as a as a human being, he is just it was so amazing just speaking to him. Um, and I think he did a good job just teeing up that you know there is there is no singular black experience, and we we all we're all different. And here's a snapshot of of a group of specific people that you're going to be following for the for the life of this season. Um, there was talk. You know, we had talked a little bit about maybe bringing him beginning, middle, and end to kind of just like check in and, and give updates on the crew and stuff like that. But as we continue breaking the season, it uh, it felt like that that cold open for the pilot kind of did what we needed it to do, and um, it it didn't it didn't fit with how the how 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 the story ended up breaking. But it's something that we we definitely. Um, talked about doing. I could I could see the start of every season being a monologue from him I mean I will say <laughs> I mean I'm, no promises but I will say um, <laughs> that monologue really really broke open the show for us so you know it was kind of the last thing that that we came up with for the pilot and uh and it was such a statement of purpose for the show as a whole and for for sort of what Phil was trying to get across and then I think that it really served, as Phil just said, it served a great purpose there. And then we also wanted the freedom to be able to make comedy cold opens that 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 weren't about something. Um, and so I think we were afraid if we did it first, second, and third, all of a sudden we'd be wedded to it Tied forever. To it. But yeah. but uh, uh, yeah, everybody. I mean, he's he's so good. He's amazing. Yeah, he's he great. Amazing. 